Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Gangwar and today we'll be studying methods of differentiation lecture one. And as the name suggests, we'll be studying various methods of differentiation. For example, logarithmic differentiation, derivatives of implicit and inverse functions. Okay. So let's begin our lecture with the logarithmic differentiation. And if you remember from differentiability lecture three, we studied two rules, product rule and quotient rule. But those rules are specifically meant for simpler functions. But if we have functions like this one or this one or this one, basically very complicated functions. In this first function, we have one function raised to other function. In the second function, we have product of multiple functions. In the third function, we have product of multiple functions in the numerator and denominator. So when we have complicated functions like these ones, product rule or quotient rule won't be applicable. So basically using those would be a very tedious task. So in that case, we'll be using logarithmic differentiation. So what do we do in logarithmic differentiation? We take log on both sides and then differentiate it, right? Now here's the catch. Even if you see these kind of complicated functions, you don't have to directly jump into logarithmic differentiation. You first have to try to simplify the functions first so that it might be possible that you don't have to apply logarithmic differentiation. If that is happening, then it's good. If that is not happening, then you have to apply logarithmic differentiation, right? You don't have to directly jump into log differentiation immediately after looking at these functions, right? Now let's see this log differentiation in action in example. So in this example, we have root x multiplied by x plus four raised power three by two divided by four x minus three raised power four by three, okay? So we can see that in this function, we cannot rationalize it, we cannot factorize it. And even if we want to apply quotient rule over here, that would be very complicated because we have powers like these three by two and four by three. So it's better to apply log differentiation over here. Okay. So we have y equals to x raised power one by two dot x plus four raised power three by two divided by four x minus three raised power four by three. If we take ln both sides, we'll be getting ln y equals to ln of x raised power one by two dot x plus four raised power three by two divide by four X minus three raised power four by three. Okay. Now if we use the log properties over here, we'll be getting ln y equals to ln of X raised power one by two plus ln of X plus four raised power three by two minus ln of four X minus three raised power four by three. Now we can shift these powers on this side, right? We'll be getting one by two ln of x plus 3 by 2 ln of x plus 4 minus 4 by 3 ln of 4x minus 3, right? This is our ln y. And now if we take derivative on both sides, we'll be getting 1 upon y dot y dash because of chain rule equals to 1 by 2 dot 1 upon x plus 3 by 2 dot 1 upon x plus 4 multiplied by 1 only minus 4 by 3 multiplied by 1 upon 4x minus 3 multiplied by 4 because of chain rule. Okay. So this is our derivative. So y dash would be y times 1 upon 2x plus 3 upon 2x plus 8 minus 16 upon 12x minus 9. And y you can take this value over here. So this is our derivative. Now, even with the help of log differentiation, this became very complicated, right? This, this is not a simple function, right? This is not a simple derivative. This is still a very complicated derivative. Imagine what would have happened in case you use quotient rule, right? So log differentiation would make your life simpler if you are able to apply it properly. And now let's solve this question. If y equals to one plus x raised power one by four multiplied by one plus x raised power one by two multiplied by one minus x raised power one by four, then find dy by dx. Now in this question, if you look at it carefully, the function can be simplified further. How? If you club this and this, you can see that this is a plus b and this is a minus b. So multiplying both of them would give us a square minus b square. So let's do that. We're getting y equals to this and this multiplied. That would be one minus x raised power one by two, right? Multiplied by one plus x raised power one by two. Now, if you look at it carefully, once again, these two are also a minus b, a plus b, right? So we'll be getting y equals to one minus x only. Basically a square minus b square. Now in this function, you would have been trapped badly in case you applied log differentiation directly without even checking the function was reducible to a simpler format or not. So it is always advisable to check if the function is reducible to a simpler format or not within the permissible domain. That's the main point point 
within the permissible domain if the function is able to reduce into a simpler format then we'll be using that simpler format right otherwise we'll be using log differentiation okay and now let's solve this example we have to find derivative of y equals to x is per x and also you have to remember the derivative of y equals to x is per x that is a very standard derivative right so again we cannot simplify this function further because it's x is per x only right we cannot do anything over here so we have y equals to x is per x let's take ln both sides we have ln y equals to ln x is per x now this becomes x times ln x because of the property of log right so if we differentiate on both sides what we'll be getting we'll be getting 1 upon y dot y dash because of chain rule equals to we have to apply product rule over here okay we'll be getting x dot 1 upon x plus ln x multiplied by 1 okay so this gets cancelled out we're getting 1 plus ln x so y dash equals to 1 plus ln x multiplied by y x is per x this is a very standard derivative you have to remember okay now let's talk about differentiation of implicit functions and before moving into the theory let's first talk about what are implicit and explicit functions okay so let's say we have a function y equals to fx equals to ax square plus bx plus c now we can clearly see that y is being explicitly defined in terms of variable x y is being explicitly defined in terms of variable x right we can separate out y from x over here right that is possible so when this is happening we can say that y is an explicit function basically y is being explicitly defined in terms of variable x now let's say there is one more function or you can say equation ax square y plus bx y square equals to cx cube y raised power 4. Now in this case, can you separate out by any chance y and x both one on right hand side and one on left hand side? No, we cannot do that. We cannot do that. So in that case, we say that this function or equation is called as implicit functions, right? So how do we differentiate them? We just differentiate them on both sides. We'll be differentiating this term, this term and this term and then try to take y dash on one side and remaining terms on the other side so that we can find out the value of y dash okay so let's see this in action with the help of an example so if y equals to x plus 1 upon x plus 1 upon x plus still infinity prove that dy by dx equals to y upon 2y minus x now in this case if i hide this term if i remove this term this upper part can you see that this is nothing but y only right because it's going till infinity even if I hide this upper term, you can see that this is still y only. So I can write this equation as y equals to x plus 1 upon y. Now if we take the LCM over here, we'll be getting y square equals to xy plus 1. Now this has become an implicit equation. Okay. So what we can do over here, we can differentiate this on both sides. So we'll be getting 2y dot y dash because of chain rule equals to we have to apply product rule over here. We'll be getting x dot y dash plus y dot 1 plus 0, right? So we have to now separate out y dash terms from the remaining terms. So we have 2y dot y dash minus x y dash equals to y, okay? So if we take y dash as common, we'll be getting 2y minus x equals to y. So that gives me y dash equals to y upon 2y minus x. So as you can see that there's nothing new over here. We have to differentiate on LHS and RHS both. Use the chain rule, product rule, quotient rule, whatever is applicable over here. We have to apply those rules and find out y dash over there, right? This is all we have to do in implicit differentiation. That's very simple, okay? And now let's talk about differentiation of inverse functions. And before talking about the main theory, tell me one thing. Let's say we have y equals to ax plus b. Can we write x in terms of y? Yes, we can do that. That would be y minus b divided by a equals to x. And this is how we find out the inverse functions, right? So what we'll be doing, we'll be replacing y with x and x with y. That would become x minus b divided by a equals to y. This is the inverse function of this function, right? Now we can easily find out the derivative of this function. So my point is, if you are able to write x in terms of y easily, in that case, there is no need of differentiation of inverse function. We won't be using that. But definitely, if we have this kind of theory, we have to have something different, right? It won't be as easy as it looks like. So this is a very simple case, which won't be asked in examinations, right? So we have, let's say two functions, fx and gx, and both are inverse of each other, right? So with the help of inverse properties, we can write f of 
जी एक्स इक्वल टू एक्स और जी ऑफ एफ एक्स इक्वल टू एक्स बोथ वेज इज इट्स ट्रू राइट नाउ लेट्स टेक दिस एग्जाम्पल इफ यू डिफरेंशिएट ऑन बोथ साइड वॉट विल बी गेटिंग विल बी गेटिंग एफ डैश जी एक्स डॉट जी डैश एक्स विद दिल्प ऑफ चेन रूल राइट इक्वल टू वन सो एफ डैश जी एक्स इक्व टू वन अपॉन जी डैश एक्स विल बी यूजिंग दिस टू फाइंड आउट द डेरेवेटिव मल्टीपल डेरेवेटिव राइट वी माइट बी यूजिंग दिस और दिस बेस्ड ऑन द कंडीशन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन राइट बोथ वेज इट कैन बी ट्रू बट वी हैव टू लुक एट द क्वेश्चन टू सी इफ दिस इज एप्लीकेबल और इफ दिस इज एप्लीकेबल राइट नाउ लेट्स लुक एट दिस क्वेश्चन If f x equals to x cube plus x raised to the power five, and g is the inverse of f, then find g dash two. So g is the inverse of f, or vice versa. F is the inverse of g, right? So we have f of g x equals to x, and g of f x equals to x. Both ways it's true, right? We have to find out the value of g dash two. Now f dash g x. Dot g dash x equals to one. So basically, f dash g x equals to one upon g dash x. And for this one, g dash f x dot f dash x equals to one. So g dash f x equals to one upon f dash x. Now in this question, which one are we going to use? This one or this one? We are going to use this one. Why? Because we have to find out the value of g dash two. So if you apply two over here, basically if you put x equals two over here, what we are getting, we are getting f dash g two equals to one upon g dash two. Do we know the value of g two? No. Can we find out the value of g two? No, because it's a very complicated function. We cannot find out the inverse directly. So that's why we cannot find g two over here. So that's why we won't be using this one. So now in this one, what do we do? We have to find some value of x so that f x becomes two, so that we can find out the value of g dash two over here. Right? We have to find out some value of x. Such that f x becomes two, and we can find out the value of g dash two. So f x becomes two for x equals to one, right? It's it's clearly visible that for x equals to one, f x equals to two. So we'll be getting g dash two equals to one upon f dash one. Now f dash one is cakewalk, right? It's simple differentiation. You can just differentiate the function and put one over here. We'll be getting f dash one. So that would be our g dash two, right? So this lecture was till here only. and in the next lecture we'll be talking about few other methods so let's meet in the next lecture thanks for watching